All right, so I want to take you through a rundown. Launch sent me their Creator Elite. This is somewhere with the discount code. I think they're ballpark 140, 150 bucks. I think it's like a 200, 200 some dollar scanner. It's really nice, aesthetic to the eye. Um, it went through a bunch of upgrades when I first got this. It was kind of a nightmare to get it all upgraded. And when I went in here um, to look at the functions, I was very, very surprised on. When you first hook up to this thing, um, it's going to ask you to register it. It's going to ask you to give it a place of like a name for where you're going to be using it. And then once you get your email and everything registered to it, as long as you're hooked up to the Wi-Fi on this thing, it will send reports directly to your email. So you can actually take those reports and you can print them off and give them to the customer or whatever it may be. Or you can just send it to your email if you need to look at something later while you're erasing and doing other diagnosis. Uh, it has a lot of functions. It's got stuff where you can go in and you can do an oil reset. You can do a suspension reset on specific models. And other, like newer models are going to have even more stuff that you can reset with this. The main function of this is it will check the SRS system and the ABS system. As soon as you fire it up, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit that first to try to make sure it's okay. Then you could back out of all that once it gives you the check or their codes or something present and then you're going to go in here and you've got this functionality here you can go to like the mall and then it will pull up stuff that you have access to here like uh, battery matching brake reset things of this nature you can actually add things to that you don't have right now so for an additional $49.95, I can add DPF regen, EGR adaption, crank position sensor learn. There's stuff that you can actually add to this scanner that um, you can buy. Adaptive, uh, front, ad adaptive front lighting, ABS bleeding. You can add things to the scanner from the mall if you want more. Or you can buy a scanner that has stuff... Um, already in it and you can pay more money for it now some people may see that the option of buying a four or five hundred dollar scanner with everything there can eliminate a lot of that but here is an option to go through there and actually add those updates to the existing scanner that you have it is something that you can do back out of here you can go to diagnose uh, you can actually pick auto detect and it will pull up and populate the vent of the vehicle and stuff and it'll take you right into it I'm working on a 2006 Lincoln Town Car. Okay. It will go in once you diagnose the vehicle. Or once you link to the vehicle. It'll say, is this correct? It'll say, yes, 462 valve, gasoline, automatic. Okay, good to go. And it's going to ask you specifics about the vehicle. Does this vehicle have two sensors? No, it does not. On the rear bumper. It's got a prox or it's got a radar sensor. And it'll go through and it'll do a quick check on your ABS and your PC or your RCM. That's the that's the main thing of this is it'll check that first. You you can actually send this report to your email. Back out of here. Go back. Would you like to end your session? Yes. Back out. Back out. Go to OBD. Once you go into OBD, it's going to connect with the vehicle. It's going to say I have no readiness completed, 8, 0 not completed, 2 not supported, data stream up to 50, ignition spark, ISO CAN bus. Okay, so we'll go here. Then I can go into my readiness monitor, so I can go my live data, my freeze frame data. I can read fault codes. I can clear fault codes here. So if I want to go to live data, let's just say I want to pick up airflow rate from the mass airflow and I want to see ambient air temp and let's look at engine RPM we'll look at short-term fuel trim for bank one and bank two let's fire it up and see what we got here it's gonna say okay it's gonna process all those and you can even graph that start it up my engine rpm it's going to tell me what my mass airflow rate is 
it should be about what the liter of your motor is. So a 4.6 liter, it's giving me between 4.6 and 5.4. That's normal in spec. I can go down here and I can look at my short-term fuel trim now that the vehicle's warming up. It's gonna start reading and it's gonna start coming into As everything starts to regulate, because it was just a flood of fuel on cold start, it's going to start to come down. It's going to start to show you what, as it warms up, what your live data is here. As it warms up, it's going to start to regulate a little bit more. You can record it. You can send a report. Let's go back. Um, well, you know what? While we're there... We'll go back to read live data and I'll show you what it looks like if you were to pick uh, bank two sensor one, bank two sensor two, short term fuel trim. No, I don't want bank two sensor two. I don't even want that. Let's uh, unselect. Let's go to bank two sensor two voltage, bank two sensor one output voltage. And let's look, let's look at those. So I can look and see here kind of what's going on with the voltage of my sensors. A little weird about this one, I don't know. Let's check the other side. Oh, there we go. Remember, we're on a cold start still, so we're, we're trying to heat up. It's going to start seeing the voltage that's put out. Uh, bank 2 sensor 1 is going to fluctuate. Bank 2 sensor 2 should stabilize at about 0.7-ish, and it should stay there. This is going to go from 0.2 to 0.8 to 0.3 to 0.9, back down. It's going to go up. It's going to fluctuate because this is your upstream sensor. Your downstream is going to indicate whether or not your catalytic converter is actually doing its job. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. If we want to look at a graph, we can look at the graph here. And we can watch it switching like the upstream sensor is supposed to do. And then we can look at this one here. And it's going to be combined right at about 0.7 volts and it's going to stay right in that range. This has a very, very nice graph for a cheaper, more economical, cost-effective scanner. This really does a lot of work for such a little scanner. And it really gives clear data. We want to back out of here. If we want to combine, we can combine these two and watch them together. Okay. We can see what the two are doing. I got a nice steady line right here. Catalytic converters seem to be doing their job, functioning properly, and my upstream is switching like it's supposed to. So I'm monitoring both my upstream and downstream sensor right now, and then I can go into the readiness status of my current driving period, and it will actually go through and it will give me the value of each one of these complete, 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 and it will let me know. Maybe if I had to fix a repair or something before an emissions test or something like that, and I needed to go out and actually drive this vehicle to make sure my monitors were all complete before I went in to get the emissions test, I could monitor this and I could essentially make sure all my monitors were on board before I went in for my emissions test. Really great scanner, worth every penny. I'm gonna go ahead and post a video um, this is actually Tuesday that I'm posting it. This video won't pop up until Thursday morning because I've been doing my videos where they're released in sessions and I'll try to see if I can go ahead and get us a discount code and everything for this. I thought I'd share this with you guys because it's an excellent tool. Now let me go ahead and get uh, ready to go home, get out of my work clothes, and uh, we'll see if this will actually operate without the Wi-Fi connected. So you can see no Wi-Fi. still functioning still working 
so you only need the Wi-Fi for updates and to send stuff back and forth to your email let's go to OBD2 let's see if we can look at live data Bank 1 sensor 1 output voltage, bank 1 sensor 2 output voltage, just look at it and see what we... Oh, I think I clicked on the wrong ones. I clicked back. Hit OK. And you can look here, you can combine. Hit OK. You can watch and see what the two are doing. So it does work even when you don't have Wi-Fi. That's good. It's got good graphing. Really good handheld. Very, very nice. 